telling us about the learning library? Yeah, so, well, you know, I mean, I, I do agree. I think that we're all using these four C's in, you know, in thinking about 21st century skills. And in developing this, we wanted to create a curricular model that takes advantage of Web 2.0 platforms. You know, look at the economy today. It's, you know, we're all struggling to find the right money, and there's so many free things out there. So not why not tap into it as our pedagogy, you know, and, and really in, in embrace what is learning in, in a participatory culture. So there are two kind of basic uh, key premises of the library, um, and they are, let me go back there really, oh, I seem to have lost that slide, but I'll just go into them um, separately. The two key concepts are what are challenges and what are media elements? And what you're seeing here is, um, is the media element submit page. Um, you can actually see all these challenges. You can, there's many ways to search them. I, I don't think that the slide is working, um, but we'll just, um, I'll show it to you later. But what you can do with the submit media element is, is you can load a video, you know, let's say you have a, your favorite video, photo, website, you know, audio file, text, think of any type of media format, including, you know, a downloadable PDF. These all can be loaded as a media element. And you'll notice that this interface here requires users to attribute the sources of their content upon submission. So this submit media element it, it, um, can be used by anyone. So whether you're an educator or a student, you can actually upload your favorite content to the library. Now, where that content comes into play is in challenges. A challenge links together a series of media elements to circulate an idea, tell a story, or maybe teach others about what interests you. And so this here, this, uh, this uh, image right here is the build challenge page where you can add interactivity. You can add things like you pose a question or ask your own audience to submit a media element, you know, based on the challenge you're sharing with them or kind of bridge media elements, two photos together through a text element. I see. Now, Erin, you've talked in the past about five primary uses you see for the learning library. Could you just kind of give us a synced wrap-up of that? Yeah. I, um, to better understand it, um, how the uses is, we actually um, pipe created our, the first collection. It's called the Media Makers Challenge Collection. And it features, it really kind of it has you explore and practice the new media literacies. Um, and we tested this with three programs, uh, two in, an in, in the classroom and one after school. And we found that the, the uses that they, um, they that, that, that in the pilot research, the uses that, um, that came up was such as, you know, their own professional development they use these challenges for. They adapted them for their own context. Some of them, some of the teachers actually integrated a challenge as is into a larger lesson plan. Um, a whole group, Global Kids, was inspired by our Media Makers collection and actually developed the whole after school program around it. Or we had a few uh, teachers create their own challenges with their students. So you can actually go to our site on educators' resources and see all these different case studies of the five uses that we, that we think serve as springboards for other educators to think about how they can adapt the learning library. Oh, that's fabulous. You know, the word attribution keeps coming, uh, coming up. Could you tell us a little bit more about the attribution component and why that's so important? Well, it's um, the the learning library, you know, it's designed as part of a larger, you know, ecosystem. It's, you know, bringing expertise of multiple groups together because it's a not it's it's a distributed knowledge network. So, um, since the learning library is distributed, we our biggest issue was how to bring all these communi communities together and share a vast amount of information, especially when not everyone understands how to attribute sources and tag media. I understand. And, um, mm -hmm. So here we go. I'm trying to get to that page. Oop, there we go. Right there. So um, this this icon, this image right here, uh, gives you our key feature of the attribution tool. And every time you submit a media element, you have the choices of I created this, someone else created this, or I adapted this. 
This is a very important concept in media literacy. Um, it, and as you click on either one, such as the one you see here, additional prompts follow for you to learn more about how to attribute the, me the media you're sharing. Hi, you know, this puts me in mind of the same attribution process that anyone who's familiar with Scratch out of, um, out of MIT would be familiar with, and that puts you in very good company. So that's, it, the whole attribution piece is so important to people, especially those who are either not knowledgeable or trying to struggle with the concept of copyright and creative license. Um, you mentioned challenges, Erin. Can you give us an example of what a challenge might involve or look like? Sure. Um, Actually, this, this challenge is one of our required challenges. It's called an in introduction to tagging. And it shows the importance of tagging as a way for your material to circulate further into the network. Um, other challenges that are in the Media Maker Collection really have you explore and practice specific skills. Um, such, for example, the new media literacy play allows you to explore the capacity to experiment with one, one with your surrounding. And, and the number one challenge used by all teachers that were piloting the work actually tried out the challenge fail and fail often. <laughs> Something we all need to know about. <laughs> and, and, been given, and be given permission to do, yes, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. You know, I actually did participate in some of these challenges um, at the conference, and not only were they informative, but they were so entertaining. I'm not going to put you on the spot and ask you to sing the song, but I will alert our audience, Sue, when you're doing these challenges, to keep your eyes out for the song and the video. And we'll leave that little, <laughs> cliff, we'll leave that little cliffhanger there with them. So, so then, then, Everyone will get it because it's yeah, the required challenge. They will. They will. And, it's, and it's fabulous. I was humming it for weeks. So how can our listeners <laughs> participate? Um, where do they get started? Well, um, the best way to get started is we've developed a set of getting started tips and tutorial cards for users to kind of get, um, get going. And you can find them at um, NML's community site. And we'll have them linked here to the ISTE site. Um, it allows you to start exploring by, you know, just sign up, become a member, you know, complete the required challenges, which allows you to have more access to other things in the library, and download the PDF for the Media Makers Challenge co Collection, and um, start exploring and practicing um, these skills in your own discipline. Excellent. Now, Erin, I know at the conference, and I know probably quite often, the question you receive is, if I can go to these sites by myself, independently, why should I use the learning library? What are the benefits? Well, I think the learning library helps to support how to apply the new media literacies across uh -huh. disciplines. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want the media, this is the third wave of the media literacy movement, and it's, we don't want, we don't, we all know it shouldn't be an aside anymore. It needs to be integrated across curricula. And the challenges help to take media and put it into a context. So there are challenges available for you to use or adapt and remix or contextualize for your group. And you can see here this map that I'm showing. It shows the different communities that have embedded the learning library into their site already since we launched at the beginning of May. And they're, they're really beginning to support and share knowledge with each other. And what better way to really have a better understanding of how to create lesson plans is to make them media-based media-based lesson plans, and to stop reinventing the wheel and share our work with each other. Can we all say amen? <laughs> amen. <laughs> so I, I would be remiss in my duties as responsible host if I didn't say to you, Erin, I know how busy, how creative, and what a powerful force of nature you are. Can you tell us what else is on the horizon for you? <laughs> You're right, I've had a busy summer. Well, starting in September, I don't know if you know this or not, but um, Henry Jenkins has left left MIT, left the building. Did everyone bow their heads? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and he's gone on to become provost professor at USC Annenberg School for Communication, and NML is following in his footsteps. You know, come September, we're going to be a research project at USC Annenberg. How